I really didn't think I would like this game. That is why I have held off for so long. And because my mom wouldn't let me play this game on release in fear of me becoming some sort of international teen assassin. Now that I've finished it though, I gotta say this game shocked me. When I started, I only planned to try out an AC game of old and was hot off of playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. But after a couple hours, I was sucked in through the straw of excellence. And furthermore, I felt a sense of duty as a pro-level gamer to sing the praises of this game to make sure all you jokers out there were doing your homework. The gameplay is visceral for a PS3 game. The world is very well designed for a PS3 game remastered as a PS4 game. And I actually really enjoyed a lot of the characters of this time period. I didn't like them on a personal level, most of them are assholes, but they're enjoyable to watch as a player. Now, should you play Assassin's Creed 3 in 2024 and beyond? This is a question I have asked myself approximately one time in my life, and for me, the answer was yes. It's a good game. However, if you need something to be the perfect peach of perfection before you slide your grimy little hands over a controller, then you might have some issues with this game. The remaster is a little jank, I got like 5 crashes during my entire experience, mostly on the deck. I even saw some people calling it a D-Master on the Steam reviews, which is kinda sad, but to be fair and transparent, I got this game for free at some point, so that didn't really impact me very much. I still don't know how it ended up on my Steam page, but you might want to check yours. It's also one of the most PS3-ass games I have played in a while, and that's not the most appealing thing to a lot of people in 2024. But I think you should really give this game a chance, especially if it's already sitting on your daunting backlog of shame along with Hollow Knight. Anyways, let's get into this dusty old hay bale that is Assassin's Creed 3. Now there's going to be some minor story spoilers, but it's really hard to talk about this game without spoiling some of the twists in the very beginning, so be warned. One of the strong points of this game is the story, and I'm not going to pretend like I'm an expert in American history and if all the events in this game are 100% accurate, I never got an A in history. But the thing this game does masterfully is giving you, the player, not only a realistic walk through the 1700s America, but also the feeling of playing as a character that's been fucked by society repeatedly. Seriously, his life sucks. I think Connor is a very interesting character to play as. For one, I didn't expect to have a half Native American, half asshole MC for twos. I kinda thought I wouldn't like him at first based off the edge, but by the end, he really grew on me. I've heard a lot of criticism of his character and how he's not the fan favorite like Ezio, but I really felt for him. I think the way he acts as well is very understandable. He's very mad and pissed off 90% of the time, but of, of course he is. No one listens to him. His family is getting slaughtered, his father is a massive dick. Even early on he makes his motives clear, burying his axe into the homestead as a sign of going to war. Dude's a one-man army, and with that comes a lot of burdens. Assassin's Creed 3 might not be the best story of all time, but it does a great job at making you feel for Connor and wanting to see more of his story. Now, Connor is not the only highlight of this game, as when you start off the game, you actually are starting off as Haytham Kenway. Right off the bat, I was very confused because that is not the guy in the box, but I'm kind of glad they did it in this way. If I was 14 playing through this game, I would have ate up Haytham's no fucks given attitude and snarky comments. His whole section was a great intro to learning the game and immersing yourself into the current timeline of events. Our first issues with the game though started piercing their way from the controller into my brain when we finally got control of Connor, who is the true protagonist and son of our former leading man Haytham, after we learned he was actually a Templar. The next several hours of this game have you going through Connor's life at a snail's pace and in total it took like 6 hours to get into the true open world and out of constant tutorials. I'm sure if I had played this back in 2012 I would have been really impressed by the graphics and game systems and plethora of content enough to ignore this tedium, but now in 2024 the spectacle really just doesn't hold up as well. It's not a big knock on the game, but I am reminded of my recent first playthrough of Bioshock 1 earlier this year. Bioshock came out in 2007 and that intro hooked me like Game of Thrones reruns on a rainy Sunday. It was quick, effective, and I was captivated the whole time as I was being introduced to Rapture. Here, not so much. And frankly, I would have been fine seeing Connor grow up through some cutscenes instead of full gameplay section tutorials. 
The main blot wasn't a complete slouch either. Seeing Connor experience never-ending oppression from the larger-than-life historical characters and events surrounding him was pretty fucked up, but I would be lying if I said it didn't make for an engaging story. I think this game would make great supplemental material as well for Americans in history class. This feels like a new take on old history that we don't really get here in America. I've been lectured on these events like five different times, and the American heroes aren't quite as heroic in this game as you might have thought. George Wash, you are as rotten as your teeth. However, the antagonists of the game are compelling and not too cheesy like some of the other games around this time. Charles Lee was definitely one of the standouts and did a great job portraying an asshole. And even after losing control of Haytham, he continues to be a very intriguing and morally gray force in the story, battling it out with both sides of the present conflict. And his later moments in the game make the couple of hours you play as him in the beginning much more enjoyable. There's also the current day storyline, which is headed by Desmond. And usually I don't really like these in the newer games I've played, but I was surprised how much I did enjoy it here. I know I'll get some flack because I haven't played all the way through Assassin's Creed 1 or Assassin's Creed 2's trilogy yet, but here I am making a Assassin's Creed 3 video, so I was kind of lost in certain parts of the story. The missions themselves were a decent break, and by the end, I wouldn't say this storyline is the best I've ever seen, but it definitely had me hooked enough to get through the entire experience, and again, it's much better than anything the newer games have in the modern day storylines, like by a lot. But all right, let's get to the combat because another thing that surprised me is how brutal it is. Connor is pushing and parrying and tearing through enemies limbs like they are made out of a tender slow cooked pot roast. Melee combat in this game is repetitive, but honestly, I didn't even care because I was having a lot of fun and hopefully you'll find it fun as well because you'll be doing a boatload of it. Stealth pops up in this game as a, an occasional mission or encounter, but I probably spent 70% of my time in melee combat scenarios instead of stealth. That ratio is a lot closer to something like Sekiro than say the recent Mirage, which heavily incentivizes stealth. But most fights boil down to wait, parry, stab, and then he's dead and repeat. The stealth missions that do come up are hardly the best in the series, but they're serviceable. It's just weird for a game called Assassin's Creed to not do much assassinating, which seems to be actually more of a trend than I thought in these games. And by the middle sections of the game, I was just kind of brute forcing my way through almost every single encounter, and at that point I didn't really miss the stealth, I was just having as much fun as I could have. If stealth is the only reason you want to try out one of these games, I would probably start with a different one. There's also some really annoying missions in this one where the game's constant need to force you into historical scenarios puts you on a horse with Paul Revere to do his whole midnight ride. This mission sucks. I hate it. It's boring. I wish it didn't exist. If I wanted to ride on a horse for an hour, I'd play Red Dead, but I don't want to. I didn't need to spend a whole mission on a horse. Horseback in general isn't really the go-to for this game either. I spent a lot of my time just traversing through the frontier and more open areas in the game just running on foot. This brings me to my last major positive point about this game and that is the world. It's another Ubisoft game so you probably know what that entails but overall I found the city areas of this game to be really fun to explore. Parkouring on the rooftops is as fun as ever and dangerous since there's snipers just kind of hanging up there, which is another thing that doesn't really make sense. I'm pretty sure these guns were dog shit and I don't know how they're so accurate in hitting Connor, but that's something else. There's also a few moments where you go underground, which makes me feel like I'm exploring the National Treasure movies, which is a guilty pleasure of mine. Also, as someone who's gone to Boston, it's very fun to see these landmarks that are still there today, like the old State House. The other sections of the open world and the homestead and the frontier, these are a bit of a bloated blemish on this older title. I'm sure back in the day this was a lot cooler, but with the newer AC games and games like The Witcher with dense, interesting worlds, this just feels kind of like a little bit of a waste of time. Trudging through snow as well during the colder months is a massive pain in my ass and gives me flashbacks to that Red Dead 2 intro. 
This is also where a lot of the side content is in the game, which is another kind of lower part of the game in my opinion. It's not horrendous, but I wouldn't go in there expecting Yakuza or Red Dead levels of fun side content. It's pretty mediocre. However, I'm sure it was much more acceptable back in the day, but in the 2020s, it just ain't as hot as it once was. Hunting is another aspect that I did a little bit of, but it's kind of basic compared to other newer games. I don't like the shooting in this game. It's a lot quicker still to just kind of go run up and stab something. Most of the side quests and rewards aren't even really worth it either since you can get through the entire game without doing most of it. I know this because that's basically what I did after a couple hours. But I also wouldn't personally skip out on this entire game just because the side content doesn't live up to modern standards, especially if you're already interested in playing this game. Anyways, that is the end of this video and I hope you give this game out a try because this is a certified Kraken classic and even now I'm kind of itching to play Assassin's Creed Black Flag so if you're looking forward to something like that, let me know.